This is Brother Peter Diamond here. We recently posted an answer to a question concerning interracial marriage. Someone had written in asking whether that was acceptable according to the teaching of the Catholic Church and the individual said that he had some problems with the concept. We responded by pointing out that there is nothing whatsoever opposed to interracial marriage in Catholic teaching. For all men come from Adam and Eve. Racism is unbiblical, it's unchristian, it's uncatholic, and so there would be no reason to have any opposition to interracial marriage. But surprisingly, we received a number of emails from individuals who wrote in disagreeing and complaining about this answer, so it needs to be addressed in a little bit more detail. It's a truth of faith that all men come from Adam and Eve, and we linked to a short article by a scientist who explained some of the reasoning behind the conclusion that the differences in races arose simply as a result of isolation of populations. And when you think about that, it's very logical and it makes perfect sense. For instance, let's say you have a married couple where one person is black and one person is white. It very frequently happens that their child will be maybe a light-skinned black person. Now suppose that light-skinned black person met someone who was also the product of a marriage between a black person and a white person, and that person married a person who looked just like he or she did, another light-skinned black person. They would in turn have a child who was probably a light-skinned black person. And you can see therefore how racial characteristics would arise and be confined to specific areas where people are marrying among themselves and that's how they came to originate. And that's frequently why Generally speaking, for instance, people from Mexico might have a certain skin color, and people from certain South American countries, okay, might be slightly different. That's because people are marrying among themselves in that area. And so it's simply illogical and stupid and idiotic and unbiblical to be a racist because we're all from Adam and Eve. Now, the church has always condemned racism, it has also condemned slavery. Many popes have condemned slavery. I just want to quickly mention that. Uh, for instance, Pope Paul III in his bull Sublimus Dei, he condemned slavery. Pope Leo XIII wrote an encyclical on the abolition of slavery, and he basically summed up the traditional teaching of the church on this issue. And he says um, in his encyclical In Plurimus, May 5th, 1888, around numbers 4 and 5, and I don't have time to quote all the passages, I'll just summarize and quote certain key points. Um, he says that it's arose from evil desires to begin to think of certain people as inferiors. He says in, e, in Plurimus number five, quote, nor did they hesitate to assert that the slave class was very inferior to the free men both in intelligence and perfection of bodily development. Okay, and he explains how numerous popes opposed slavery and condemned it, such as Gregory the Great, Hadrian the First, Alexander the Third, Innocent the third, Gregory the ninth, Pius the second, and on and on and on. Some people say, well, how come it lasted for so long? Well, one of the reasons for that is that it was so ingrained into the social fabric that it wasn't easy to overthrow the whole social order. And so in many cases, people had to try to work as justly as possible within the social framework. And it wasn't necessarily incumbent upon them to overturn the whole thing, but simply to try to treat people as rightly as possible and as justly as possible within that social framework which was in place. But in an ideal framework, it would be opposed and outlawed, which is why Pope Paul III says in his bull Sublimus Dei about the converted natives and even the natives who were unconverted in the pagan lands that they should not be subjected to slavery. Okay, and racism has been condemned many times by the church. It's opposed to the very concept of what it means to be Catholic, because Catholic in Greek means universal. It's the universal church from all nations, okay? The truth we read in Galatians 3, that it doesn't matter if you're a converted Jew or converted Gentile. It doesn't matter whether you are from a barbarian nation or whatever. What matters is whether you have the faith of Christ. There is no distinction. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And so the people who insist on racism 
or opposition to interracial marriages are schismatics, and I believe they are excommunicated, because they insert a division when the magisterium has said there's no division among those who are in Christ. In Pope Pius XI's encyclical Rerum Ecclesiae, uh, 1926, he explains how there should be native priests, okay, and he explains how natives should be ordained um, among the converted people, and he says that, quote, there should exist no discrimination of any kind between priests, be they European missionaries or natives, there must be no line of demarcation marking one off from the other, end quote. That's in number 26 of the encyclical. So those who oppose interracial marriage insert a mark of demarcation, a line of demarcation, where there isn't one and should not be one. Now I must say that I feel like I'm asserting the obvious because frankly I am, but I guess it needs to be repeated because there are a few people who are so selfish and uncharitable and consumed by pride and their evil uh, fascination with their own that they have a problem with this. In the e-exchanges, we cited 1 Corinthians 7.39, where St. Paul says that a woman is bound by the law as long as her husband lives, but if her husband dies, she is at liberty. Let her marry to whom she will, only in the Lord. End quote. No uh, mention that she can't marry people of another, quote, race or anything like that. It's not biblical. Of course, the church has always allowed marriages between people of different nationalities, stocks, etc., races, what have you. In many of the mission territories, many of the settlers who would go along with the missionaries because they would try to establish Catholic communities in the land, such as in the Jesuit missions up in Canada um, at the time of the Jesuit North American missionaries, there would be many settlers from Europe who would go. Some of them would marry converted natives. The church never condemned it. There have been many encyclicals on mixed marriages condemning mixed marriages, people of a different religion. Yes, the church excludes people based upon religious beliefs, not upon uh, race or nation or language. And in all of those papal documents and encyclicals, which condemned mixed marriages, marriages between Catholics and non-Catholics, interracial marriage was never condemned. It was so clearly accepted that it didn't even have to be explicitly mentioned because it was always allowed. Someone wrote to us and said, well, what about in the Bible how it was forbidden to marry people in the Old Testament of other nations? Well, that's simply because those of the other nations worshipped false gods. For instance, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, it says that when the Lord your God brings you into the land which you shall possess, cast out the nations before you, nor shall you make marriages with them, you shall not give your daughter to their son, etc. But then it goes on to say in the same chapter and in the next verses, quote, For they will turn away your sons from following me to serve other gods. Okay, so that was the reason that God forbade marrying people of those nations. It wasn't because of their bloodlines, it was because of their false worship. And in fact, this is further confirmed and the racists are further refuted when we consider Exodus chapter 12 where it talks about eating the Passover lamb and how it first says that those who are strangers to your nation should not eat of the Passover lamb prefiguring how those who are not of the true church should not receive communion. But then it says in Exodus 12, 48 to 49, quote, And when a stranger dwells with you and wants to keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as a native of the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat it. One law shall be for the native born and for the stranger who dwells among you. End quote. So this is saying that if you have someone who's willing to be converted and worship the true God and be circumcised, then he shall be as the native, and there shall be one law between you. Okay, And if he's going to be as the native of the land, then it would no longer be forbidden for him to marry an Israelite. And so, again, we see how the division is based on religion 
not on race. It's all in the church. All who have come over to the side of the true God have the same rights. And we see this again in Pope Pius XI's encyclical Ecclesium Dei, number 22. It says, God who is not a respecter of persons and who puts no difference between us and them in such a union, referring to the union of the church, all nations, no matter what their race, their language, or their liturgy, will enjoy the self-same rights. Okay, and in his encyclical Rerum Ecclesiae, uh, February 28, 1926, point number 26, he says, Anyone who looks upon these natives as members of an inferior race or as men of a low mentality makes a grievous mistake. And there are many, sadly, who are of that mindset. The position which would assert any real division between members of the true church based upon race is heresy. And I want to quote a few more papal passages to prove the point. We quoted this on our website, Pope St. Pius X, in his encyclical Lacrima Bili Statute No. 5, June 7, 1912. He says, speaking about believers, Christian charity which holds all men without distinction of nation or color as true brethren shall be continually preached and commended. And so if there is no distinction between color, that means that there is no reason to forbid marriages between them. In Pope Pius XII's encyclical Summi Pontificatus number 47, he says that those who enter the church, whatever be their origin or their speech, must know that they have equal rights as children in the house of the Lord where the law of Christ and the peace of Christ prevail. And he goes on to say that there is basically no distinction, neither Gentile nor Jew, neither barbarian nor Scythian, etc. And so there is no distinction, and they all have equal rights. In Pope Pius XII's encyclical Fulgens Radiator, number 27, in the year 1947, he reiterates the same point, explaining how one must consider all as brothers in Christ of whatever stock or nation or culture. And never once does he say that people of different stocks or nations or cultures or races shouldn't marry each other. In his uh, encyclical Evangelii Preconis, number 2, June 2, 1951, Pius XII says, For missionaries preach to all men the practice of natural and Christian virtues and brotherly and common fellowship which transcends racial conflicts and national frontiers. Okay, so if you are still bogged down by racial conflicts and racial divisions and barriers, you simply haven't accepted Christ. And frankly, to us, it's an obvious sign of bad will. It's a person who doesn't have in his heart goodness and charity and really is still trapped by human measurements and not the measurement of Christ and his law and his truth. It's all about your natural upbringing, your natural surroundings. And so it's a person who hasn't really accepted the supernatural faith and charity of Christ and his church. And then there are other encyclicals I could cite where any division between members of the true church is condemned. But it's pretty obvious. And the reason that there aren't more specific papal documents allowing it is simply because it was never forbidden. It was simply allowed. And so it's it's like looking for something which allows a marriage between people of a 15-year age difference. I mean, you're not going to find any, simply because it wasn't condemned that a 47-year-old could marry a 32-year-old. And as we pointed out in the e-exchanges, that it's completely illogical because if the racists are going to insist upon these divisions, where do they draw the line? Certainly then they would be in quite a quandary as to how to answer the question about people who may be in between what we consider to be, you know, a black person or an Asian or a white person. So what if a person has more of an olive-colored skin? 
you know, can that person marry a person with fair skin? And it's simply idiocy. And the last thing I wanted to mention is that not only has the church condemned slavery, but in condemning it in In Plurimus number 5, Publi the 13th in his 1888 encyclical explained how it's basically rooted, and this whole mentality and outlook is rooted in the false idea that people of different races are necessarily inferior in intelligence and perfection of bodily development. And we got an email from a so-called traditional Catholic who's a racist, and basically saying that, that they're, you know, there are differences in races and that these differences also entail differences of intelligence, bodily perfection, etc. Well, this is specifically condemned in In Plurimus, Pope Leo XIII's 1888 encyclical, and he says, such inhuman and wicked doctrines are to be specially detested. And so that individual thinks he's Catholic, he's not. You're just a schismatic. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is that someone else wrote us saying that he agrees with us on this point, which everyone should, it's quite obvious, uh, but that he thinks that a lot of traditional Catholics are racist. Well, I think that some of them are, but I think that a lot of people in general are. I don't think it's necessarily a problem that's um, you know, more predominant in traditional Catholic circles. I think it's all over the place because people are generally selfish, they're consumed with themselves, they're uncharitable, they don't really love their fellow man, and they don't really accept the faith of Christ, which brings with it a supernatural charity, which transcends these naturalistic things. And it's not just white people or some others who have a problem with this. There are a lot of black people who can never get over the fact that they're black. That's all they talk about. The fact that they're black this, they're black that, and their struggles as blacks, and and so a lot of those people are racist too. And this overemphasis on their own skin color, and this constant um, consuming desire to see everything in terms of you know black versus white, etc., or whatever, that reveals a racist outlook as well. And so it really is stupidity and nonsense and these people are bogged down in their darkness and they waste their lives worrying about this stuff because they really don't accept Christ and we see this not only with the people we've mentioned but also with uh, Jewish converts many of them can never get over the fact that they're Jewish and so their whole conversion is defined by their Jewishness and these people again are not of Christ and one thing I wanted to mention is some people may say well how come God then chose a specific people to, you know, in the Old Testament, reveal his truth and, and keep his name and, and with whom he would be identified. And I believe the answer to that, and I'm not aware of any specific papal pronouncement which is expanded in detail upon this, but this is my opinion which I believe makes sense and is in conformity with traditional Catholic teaching, is that the only reason that God emphasized a certain people in the Old Testament is because before he actually came on earth and real, revealed the fullness of his doctrine and before our Lord came it would have been much more difficult for people to distinguish between the true God and the various false gods of the nations unless he identified his miracles, his victories his signs and wonders his prodigious uh, benefits that he conferred upon this people with certain individuals so that the whole world would know that that God is working through these people okay in the Old Testament so I believe that's the only reason you have an emphasis there it's so, solely so that he would be distinguished from the false gods and so a lot of the Jews think well weren't we so special that we were chosen in the Old Testament well frankly it wasn't because you were special it was simply because God had to choose someone to separate his own works and miracles and name from others. That's it.